Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding RF Attenuators. This presentation provides a short overview of the different types of attenuators commonly used in radio frequency test and measurement applications. Attenuators, also often referred to as pads, are devices which reduce the amplitude of a signal passing through them. There are many different ways to construct attenuators, the most common being carbon resistors, but other devices, such as pin diodes, are used in some implementations. At the component level, attenuators can be implemented in a variety of form factors, such as through hole, surface mount, or flat pack devices. But in this presentation, we'll focus on connectorized attenuators commonly used in RF test and measurement applications. Among these applications, the most common is protecting sensitive instruments from damage by reducing the input signal to a safe level. Another very common use of attenuators in measurement applications is preventing overload. High power levels can lead to the creation of spurious products or distortion within an instrument, even when the input power is below the damage threshold. Less common, but also important, is the use of attenuators for impedance matching, that is, reducing the level of reflections or standing waves between components. The three main categories of attenuators used in test and measurement are fixed attenuators, step attenuators, and voltage variable attenuators. Over the next few minutes, we'll discuss each of these attenuator types and their most important parameters. Fixed attenuators are by far the most common type of attenuator, and in test and measurement applications, these are almost always connectorized so they can be directly attached to cables, devices, etc. As the name implies, they're designed to have a relatively constant or fixed attenuation over their specified bandwidth. That is, they're not configurable or adjustable. Fixed attenuators that are designed for high power or high wattage applications will often have a cooling pad or fins that help to dissipate heat. Most fixed attenuators are made with single integer dB attenuation values, such as 1, 3, or 5 dB, with higher attenuation values usually being available in 10 dB increments. Non-standard attenuation values, such as 27 dB, can be obtained by cascading multiple attenuators, or by using variable attenuators. We'll talk about both of these methods in just a few moments. But before we do, let's briefly cover basic attenuator parameters. The most fundamental of these is, of course, the attenuation value, or the amount of attenuation provided. This is normally given in decibels, or dB. Although not commonly shown on the attenuator itself, the attenuation accuracy is typically given on the data sheet as well. The second most important parameter is the frequency range in Hertz. The attenuator should provide the same level of attenuation across this frequency range. In most high-quality attenuators, the variation over this range is less than 1 dB. This flatness usually becomes harder to maintain as frequency increases, and attenuators with wider frequency ranges therefore come at a higher cost. Another key attenuator parameter is maximum power, which can be given in dBm, but is more often given in units of watts. The maximum power may be specified for both constant or CW signals, as well as peak power for pulsed or bursty signals. Most connectorized attenuators are made to have one of the standard RF impedances of either 50 or 75 ohms, and it's important to be sure that the attenuator impedance matches the impedance of the cable and devices it's connected to. In addition to these basic parameters, other parameters such as the amount of phase shift introduced by the attenuator, the effect of temperature on the provided attenuation, and the linearity of the attenuator, that is, the levels of harmonics and intermodulation products, may also be important, especially for attenuators that are not constructed using purely resistive components. Now let's come back to cascading attenuators that is, connecting them in series. 
This can be used to achieve a desired non-standard attenuation value or to increase total attenuation. For example, we could connect two 20 dB attenuators in series to achieve a total attenuation of 40 dB. When connecting attenuators in this way, the total attenuation is the linear sum of the individual attenuations in dB. However, when cascading attenuators, particularly in high wattage or high power applications, the order of the attenuators may become important. More specifically, we need to ensure that each attenuator can handle the power present at its input. In this example, the first attenuator has a maximum power of 100 watts, and the second has a maximum power of only 5 watts. If the input to the cascade is 50 watts, this will not be an issue, because the first attenuator can easily handle this power, and the input to the second attenuator will only be about half a watt, which is well below the second attenuator's maximum input power. On the other hand, if we were to reverse the order of the attenuators, this would subject the first attenuator to much more power than it's rated for, potentially damaging or destroying the attenuator. Generally speaking, the attenuators with higher power ratings should be placed at the front of a cascade. Next we'll discuss step attenuators, which allow attenuation to be configured in discrete steps. In some step attenuators, the attenuation is configured by flipping switches or by rotating knobs. For example, to create a total attenuation of 18 dB, we would flip the switches for 2, 6, and 10 dB. Some other step attenuators are controlled by an electronic or digital input. Switch or knob-based attenuators usually have a minimum step size of 1 dB, whereas for digitally controlled attenuators, the number of steps and the step size are often a function of the number of bits in the control signal. Programmable step attenuators are a more sophisticated type of step attenuator and allow for attenuation to be controlled both manually as well as programmatically or remotely via GPIB, USB, or LAN connections and by means of industry standard Skippy commands. Many can also control one or more external attenuators which can be cascaded and controlled as one logical attenuator. In addition to being controllable via software, programmable attenuators have numerous advantages, such as faster switching speeds, smaller step sizes, and frequency correction, which allows for more precise attenuation by taking into account frequency-dependent behavior. Another type of attenuator is voltage variable attenuators, which change attenuation smoothly rather than in discrete steps. The amount of attenuation is configured using an analog control voltage and is therefore characterized in units of dB per volt. Since this relationship may not be strictly linear, it's often given in the form of a curve. Voltage variable attenuators are most often used in applications like automatic gain control, calibration, etc where the feedback or control signal is purely analog. Note, however, that the attenuation accuracy in voltage variable attenuators is often somewhat less than that found in fixed or step attenuators. It's also worth keeping in mind that voltage variable attenuators are commonly constructed using pin diodes or transistor elements, so linearity characteristics such as harmonics or third order intercept may also be important. Regardless of type, RF attenuators are usually characterized or measured using three main types of instruments. Vector network analyzers, or VNAs, are the most common and the most flexible choice. But scalar network analysis of attenuators can be performed using spectrum analyzers with an internal or external generator. Similar measurements can also be made using an RF signal generator and an appropriate RF power sensor. Although all of these methods can be used to measure basic attenuator parameters, measuring some parameters, for example impedance, phase shift, third order intercept, etc., may require a certain instrument. It's also important to keep in mind that the instrument must have sufficient dynamic range, 
especially when characterizing attenuators, or cascades, with high attenuation levels. Let's end with a brief summary. Radio frequency attenuators are devices that are used to reduce the level of radio frequency signals. This is useful in a wide variety of applications, including test and measurement. There are three main types or categories of attenuators. The first of these are fixed attenuators, which provide a roughly constant level of attenuation over a given frequency range. The second is step attenuators, which allow attenuation to be controlled in defined steps, usually by switching a set of cascaded attenuators in or out. These step attenuators may be manually controlled via toggle switches or dials, or may be programmatically controlled. The third type is voltage variable attenuators, in which the level of attenuation is configured by means of an analog input voltage. All three types of attenuators can be characterized in terms of basic parameters, such as the level of attenuation, the frequency range over which attenuation level is effectively constant, and the input and output impedance of the attenuator. But other characteristics apply to some attenuator types. Attenuators can be characterized in a number of ways, the most common being vector network analyzers, but signal generators and spectrum analyzers, or power sensors, can also be used to measure attenuator performance. This concludes our presentation, Understanding RF Attenuators. If you'd like to learn more about attenuators, applications of attenuators, or test and measurement instruments from Rodian and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.